Hello, welcome. Now, if you are working with the free version of Teams and you wanted to add a file and you wanted that file to be from your OneDrive, one of the things you may have noticed is that you will not be able to do that if you do not have OneDrive for business. And so it's possible then that you may want to consider upgrading from the free version of Teams to a paid version. And as of the recording of this video, you would see several levels of Microsoft Office or Microsoft 365 with respect to Teams. Now, as of the recording of this video, there are three levels of plans available that will allow you to stream meetings using Microsoft Teams. And you'll see them designated as E1, E3, and E5. Each of the plans requires an annual commitment. Each of the plans allows for a single user to sign up. Only one of those plans allows for streaming as well as all of the Microsoft Office applications with the package. And that would be the package designated as E3. So what we're going to do is we're going to try this one and use the trial. We're going to click this link that says try for free. Now, one of the things you're going to notice is that during the trial, Microsoft will be basically putting you into 25 licenses for 30 days. However, it's likely that you'll want to sign up for a single license even during the trial. Now, this is something that you're going to want to verify when you are actually considering the trial or considering a paid account. Representatives from Microsoft state that as of the recording of this video, there is no minimum requirement with any of the plans and you are able to start with a single user for any of the plans. And so the fact that you're looking at 25 licenses here doesn't necessarily mean that that is what you have to sign up for. In fact, if you were to go to the purchase process and you were to click the buy now button again, as of the recording of this video, you would not see that requirement for 25 licenses. You will see all of the apps. You will see the streaming application for Microsoft, which is called Stream, as well as Teams. Both of those will be necessary in order for you to be able to do live meetings and to broadcast them. So we are going to go through these aspects of the trial. We're then going to click Next. What we're then going to do is we're going to go through the process of creating an account. We're then going to need to write in our name and identifying information. You're then going to click Next. You're going to need to give your business a name for the sake of the trial or for the sake of using it in Microsoft 365. You'll want to make sure that the name is going to be available. If it is, you can then click Next. You're then going to be asked for some identifying information. You're then going to click Sign Up. And Microsoft will then start the account creation process. What you'll then do is to go to Setup and you'll then choose the account you just set up. What you'll then have is you'll then have an admin area. You'll want to go to your left side menu and you'll then see the applications available to you. What you're then going to do is you're going to open up your Teams application, which is now the business version of Teams. And when you log into the upgraded interface, you're going to see a calendar item instead of the schedule item. What you're going to do here is you're going to click on your calendar. And once you are inside of your calendar, in order to create a broadcast, what you can do is you can come over to the right hand side and you're going to come to this button that says new meeting. You're going to go to the drop down arrow and what you're going to do is you're going to click on this button or this link that says live event. Now what you're going to do is you're going to give your event a title and location. You're then going to write in details about the event. You'll then click Next. What you'll then need to decide is how you want to have individuals attend your event. Now it's possible that what you want to do is you want to have a public event. However, you may not be able to do that depending on how you set up your account. So if you encounter this, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to enable your account for live event permissions to allow for you to have public events. We're going to need to go into our admin for Microsoft Office and to access Microsoft Office we're going to go to the left side 
We're going to click on Office 365. What we're then going to do is to go into our admin. What we're then going to do is click Show All. We're then going to go to our Teams interface. And we're then going to need to go into Meetings. We're then going to need to go into Live Events Policies. We're then going to need to go into Global. What we're then going to do is we're going to change this. We're going to change this to Everyone. And once we do that, we're then going to click Save. Now once we do that, it may take time for this part of the process to take place or to propagate. In some cases, it might take over 24 hours. In other cases, it may take less. What you'll want to do is you'll want to start checking your Teams interface and you'll want to make sure that your Live Events button is no longer going to be grayed out. And as you can see, if we come back right away, it's still going to be grayed out. So we're going to wait approximately 24 hours or at least until the following morning to determine if this has propagated. Now the process took approximately six hours before this public button was available. So what we're going to do now is we're going to back up a few steps. We're going to go back to the point where we are creating our live event. We are going to click this back button and we're going to close out this test page. We're going to discard the changes and we're going to start the process over again. What we're going to do is to go to this right hand corner. We're then going to click on live event. That's going to bring us to this interface and we're going to write in our title here. If a location is appropriate, you're going to write one in. You're going to give yourself a start time and an end time and you're going to write in details about the event. What you're then going to do is click Next. Then you're going to have options available to you. You have a new live event. You can create this event for people or groups. You can create this event for people just in your organization. Or you can create a public event which will function like a webinar. And we have some options available to us in order to enable. First, we can allow attendees to record the session or we can disallow this. We can have captions throughout the presentation or we can disallow them. After the live event is over, we can have an attendee engagement report. And we can also have a Q&A system during our event. Now in some cases, we may use another encoder in order to deliver our team's live event. And so we're going to tick this box and we're going to use the Microsoft Teams interface. In order to provide support, we can place a URL here inside of this dialog box. Once we've chosen our options, we can then click Schedule. What we can then do is we can then take the link, we can distribute the link in order to give people access to our live event. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click the attendee link. It'll then be copied to our clipboard. What we're now going to do is we're going to look at another browser as if it were another attendee. We're doing that so that we can look from the perspective of someone who is going to get the link from us. What we're going to do now is we're going to place that link inside of this area and we're going to click the event. Now, what you're going to see here is that the individual is going to get an interface that says, watch the live event inside of Microsoft Teams. They'll either need to download the Microsoft Teams app or they can watch the event on the web. What we will do then is we will then join the event. Now it's at this point that we are going to need to have the desktop application in order to deliver our live event. And so we're going to need to click this button to download the Teams application. We're then going to install the Teams application. Once you have the application installed, you're then going to need to sign in with your Teams address. You can choose to have the application on other devices or you can choose this application only. You'll then have your application installed on your desktop. What you're then going to do is to go to your calendar. 
What you'll then do is to go to your event. What you're then going to do is you're going to join the event. Now what you're going to do is you're going to join the event as a producer. And you'll see here that you have a join now button. Now before you join the Teams meeting as a producer, you're going to want to take a look at your settings. Teams will choose a microphone and they'll also choose your camera. So you're going to want to make sure that you have both of them set as you want them to be. You'll also notice that upon entry, you'll be muted when you join the meeting. You'll also notice that your webcam is going to be on. You can turn it off. What we're going to do now is we're going to join the meeting. So you are now inside of the desktop software and you are within the live event facility. And what you can see here, you're going to see two screens. First, you're going to see the queue on the left side. And then you're going to see the live event screen on the right side. And that's what people are actually going to see. And once again, your controls will be here at the bottom. You're going to see your camera. You're going to see the mic where you can mute. And then you're going to see where you can switch the camera to another presenter or to another angle that you might have. You'll also see here on the right side that you are going to be able to share your screen. And so, for example, what we would do here if we were going to share our screen is we would click this button. And then that's going to give you options of the screens you have available. Of course, what you can also do is you can share specific windows on your personal computer instead of your screen. Now, the disadvantage to using your screen is that you are really going to be showing exactly what's going to be on your screen. And Microsoft actually recommends that if you're going to show a live event using Teams that you use multiple screens, so you'll be able to stage things before people actually see it. Now, if you choose not to share your screen, you're going to hit this back button and what you can do is you can click right on top of this area. And basically what that's going to do is that's going to give you the option of sharing your camera. We're going to turn the camera on. When we turn the camera on, what you see at the bottom is going to be available to the queue. You're then going to click on top of there. And then what you're seeing here in the queue is what's showing on your camera. But for the sake of this video, the camera is being covered and grayed out. However, this is actually what's showing on an actual camera or webcam at this moment. What you can do is you can show your webcam and your screen at the same time. To do that, you're going to click the share button. And basically what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to click a screen. And when you actually start the live event, what's going to be showing is going to be the screen that you're going to be sharing plus the camera here on the right side. Now, when you enable screen share, you can also share the system audio. That means then that if you're sharing a video, that video will play and the sound from that video will play during your live event. What we're going to do is turn back to single view or single source, and we're actually showing our camera. Now, when we're ready to go live with our broadcast, what we are going to do is we're going to click this button that's going to be the send live button. That means now that we are ready to go live with what's in our queue. To start the live broadcast, we're going to click the start button. We're going to be asked if we are sure. We're going to click continue. And then we will be starting the live event. Now, once the live event starts, we can also then share our screen. So we can be in the middle of a live event. We can click on the share button we can choose to share a screen or a window. Now, for the sake of this video, we are not going to do that. However, this is something that we can do. Now, there are a few other controls that you're going to want to be aware of. First, you're going to be able to come here to the top. And what you're going to be able to do is to click this button that says meeting notes. Now, basically, if you click this take notes button, you're going to be writing notes into an area where others are going to be able to see the notes that you are typing. You're also going to have here a conversation area, and this is basically going to be your meeting chat. And as you are conducting your live event, if you want to chat with the individuals that are going to be present, 
you can use this system. What you'll also be able to do is you'll be able to see the participants. So right now, we're the only ones inside of the live event. However, you had other individuals, you'd be able to see those individuals here in the meeting and the attendees will be able to see those individuals also. If you want to look at your controls, once again, you can go to your settings pane. You'll then be able to see your audio, your speaker and your microphone as it is configured with Microsoft Teams. In order to close this area, you can click on top of the settings button. Now, basically, once we have completed our live broadcast, what we can do is we can end the broadcast. Now, once we have completed our live broadcast, what we can do is we can click this leave button. We can then click leave anyway, and then our live event will then be over. But once the live event is over, what you can do is you can come back inside of your actual event. And you're going to see that you have your resources. You can download the recording from this button. You can get the transcript from this button if you set it up ahead of time. There are a few advanced options. You do have a backup recording that you can download. Once you have all that you need from your resources, you can close this box. Now, once you have done your live event in Teams, we're now going to look at some pre and post processing activities. First, we're going to look at the post processing activities with your team videos. Now, once again, you are going to make sure that you download your recording from the calendar interface. And you want to do that as soon after your live meeting as possible. The other thing you want to do is to make sure that you download your transcript. And you can download your transcript from this download arrow. And that transcription is going to come in the form of a VTT file. Once you've done that, you can then close the window. Now, if you have a Microsoft Teams paid account, you have options in terms of where you want to store and serve the video. For example, one of the things that you can do if you have a Microsoft Teams paid account is to go to Microsoft Stream. And that means then that you'll need to go to your Microsoft 365 account. You'll then need to click on Office 365 from this window. The application you're going to look for is called Microsoft Stream. If you don't see that application, you're going to click on All Apps. And typically, the apps will be arranged in alphabetical order. You can find Microsoft Stream here in this menu. That's going to open up Microsoft Stream. What you will then be able to do is to create a channel and then upload your videos to Microsoft Stream. So what you're going to do first is you're going to go to the Create area. You're then going to create a specific channel. You can select an image for your channel. You'll want to find the organization that you have on Teams. You'll then select that organization. And actually, Microsoft Stream will not allow you to create a channel until you select that group or organization. You are then going to click Create. What you're then going to do is you're going to select your video for upload. You're then going to give your video a name, a title, and description. You can choose your own thumbnail or you can allow Microsoft Stream in order to choose the thumbnail for you. What you'll then do is you will then choose your permissions. You can determine who is going to be able to watch the video. Once you do that, you can then move on to other options. If you want to leave on comments, you can do that. If you want to generate a caption file for the video, you can do that also. What you can then do is click publish. Once you do that, you can then get a share link for the video. And what you can then do is to copy the link. Now, the only individuals that will be able to watch the video will be those within your organization inside of Teams. And those will be the individuals that you selected within the organization that we use to set up the video. What you can then do is to go back to your home page. And you will then see your video as well as your channel. Now that you are back in 
Office 365, what you're going to want to do is to take a look at some of the pre-processing procedures. And to do that, we're going to go into the admin area of your Microsoft 365 account. When you get to the admin area, you're going to click show all. Once you've done that, you're then going to go to teams. What you're going to want to do is to go inside your meetings area. You're then going to go into your meeting settings. And you're going to notice that within your email invitations that you have the opportunity to make sure that you have a logo URL, which you can place here in this dialog box, your legal statement. And you want to make sure that you're going to have your legal statement in this dialog box. Your help or support URL you are going to place in this dialog box and then any text that you are going to write inside of your footer. What you can do then is preview what that's going to look like inside of your invitations. Now when you first set up your Teams account it is quite possible that you will come into your calendar but you will not see the option to create a live event. That typically means that there is something within the account that is not working. And there are some steps that you can take before you go to support in order to try to get them to rectify it. One of the things that you can do is you can go to your Microsoft Teams account. Once you do that, you're going to go to the admin area. Once you get to the admin area, you are then going to go to show all. What you're then going to do is you're going to go to the Teams area. What you're going to do when you go to the Teams area is you're going to go to the Meetings tab. You're then going to go to your Live Events Policies. And what you're going to see typically is you're going to see at least one policy enabled and that's going to be your global organization wide default. Now one of the things you can do is you can edit this policy. You're going to click on that policy and what you're going to do is you're going to change the policy to everyone. You're then going to click save. Now in some cases this will trigger the system to allow the live event enablement to appear. What could happen is you could go back and you still will not see the enablement for your live meeting. What you'll need to do is to go back to that admin area inside of Teams and you're going to go back to your admin and you're going to go back to the policy area. You're going to go back to Teams again. You're then going to go to the meetings area. What you're going to do again is you're going to go to your live events policies. Now what you can do is you can go back to this global policy and then what you're going to do is highlight the global policy. Then you're going to go and click manage users. And what you want to do is you want to write in and add yourself as a user in order to enable you to be part of that policy. You can start by writing in your name and then adding yourself to that policy so that you'll then be part of it. What you can also do is add a new policy. So for example, what we can do here is we can make sure that the policy is what we want it to be. We'll give it a name. We'll then click save. What we'll then do is we'll add ourselves to that policy. And once again, what you're going to do is you're going to write in the name. And then once you do that, you're going to add in yourself as a person to take advantage of this policy. Now, if you go back and you still do not see the live event enabled, that means then that there's going to be a problem and you're going to need to get Microsoft 365 support involved in the process. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next process. Mm -hmm.